What is up party people? I am back today with the updated edge coating video that I promised you. This is the coffin wallet that I just made and put the pattern, or not the pattern, but I just put the video out for you a couple days ago, depending on when you're watching this. I'm not really sure, but any hoozle, please enjoy this video. Um, I walk you through the entire process of edge coating the coffin wallet and I talk a little bit about the different edge coats that are out there but be sure to check the description box below for links to all of my favorite suppliers. Enjoy. So today we're going to edge coat our completed coffin wallet. If you didn't see the video before where I made this, check the description box below and I'll have the link on how I made this wallet here. But this is a pattern by Seemingly Wicked and I made a couple of amendments, but I cover all of that in the other video. So it's all done and completed. You have a new project and you want to finish off your edges. There are a few different options to choose from. A, you can leave them raw like so. What will eventually happen is with use, the edges are gonna get tattered, not tattered, but they're gonna get annoyed by going in and out of a wallet or in and out of a bag or back pocket, things like that. So what'll happen is the cork backing will start to fray ever so slightly and it'll put off these long pieces of, I almost wanna say fur, but it's not fur, but it just kind of looks like a peel. This is a brand new wallet, so it doesn't have them, but if you look like right here, you can see where it's starting to fray just a touch. So you can leave them raw. The second option is you can seal your edges with Mod Podge. I use just regular old matte Mod Podge. This is a water-based sealer. It's also used as a finisher, or it can also be used as a glue. And this will dry nice and clear, and it'll seal all these edges. But if you want to level up your wallet and you wanna add some paint to the edge, like these, then you're gonna use leather edge paint. So there are several different companies out there. There's Giardini, there's this brand. I got this from Rocky Mountain Leather Supply. It starts with a V. I can't remember the name of it right now, but I think it's a French company. Um, Giardini is Italian. There's also Angelus. This is readily available at Tandy Leather. So you have lots of different options for leather edge paint. But the difference between leather edge paint and just sealing your edges with Mod Podge is you're gonna get a nice rounded finished edge, which then you can customize your color and put whatever color you want on the edge, or you can make it match and then you have a nice seamless design. So for today's video, we are gonna be using Giardini Base Coat Dense, and we are going to layer this up. We're gonna do at least three layers, potentially four, depending on how well it sits in and settles in all of these cracks and crevices here. And then we'll come in with a color. I'm not sure what color I'm gonna do yet, but you can mix and match any of the colors and create your own custom color. So we'll see. I used rainbow thread, so I don't know, I might go wild and do a bright color on the edge, or I might just go for like this blue gray color and just make it match. So to get started, I have my edge paint tool. This is a roller. This area here has grooves that the paint collects in and then you roll it onto your edge. You can see mine is used heavily. It's full of paint. Um, these caps do unscrew and I have heard that you can put oil in here, but I have personally never oiled my rolling tools and it seems to work just fine. And then I'm gonna be using Base Coat Dense. This is a thicker base coat by Giardini. And what that's going to do is build up and create a nice opaque rounded edge, slightly rounded edge, for, and then we can put our color on top of it. So you wanna make sure that you have nicely trimmed flush flat edges as much as possible. There's a little edge right here. That one's a little funky, but I'm just gonna edge coat right over it. But what you're gonna notice is there's gonna be a bump right here because the edge coat is gonna go right over top of that bump. But I'm not super concerned with it. I think in the end we can blend it in. And then this edge here, some of the pieces are longer than the other pieces. I'm not sure if you can pick that up on the camera. So I can trim it down and make it flat or I can use more edge coat and fill that whole section in that might take more coats because it's gonna to have to fill in from the bottom up 
whereas these are all nice and flush so it's just going to rest right on top. But now that I'm looking at it, I can totally just trim that section down and then I won't have to whoa, worry about filling it in. So when you're trimming your cork pieces or vinyl or leather, you want to make sure that you have a nice sharp rotary blade. And when you're holding your rotary blade, you want it to be completely vertical. If you tilt your hand toward the outside or toward the inside, then this edge is going to be beveled and you want it to be straight as possible, straight up and down. As always, exercise caution when using a rotary blade. These bad boys are very sharp, and if you even just barely nick your finger, you will cut yourself. So, okay, now that edge is nice and smooth, and we have a project ready to go. The first thing that I'm going to do is burn all the edges just to get off any little excess furries or threads that might be popping out. I want to have a nice, clean canvas to work with. I'm just going to check this side out. So I don't really want to trim this one anymore because I'm, if I do, I will be getting very close to that stitch line there. But what happened and what caused that is when I was trimming with my blade, it slipped. And so it just, it didn't catch the entire edge. But I'm wondering now, this could go really great or really badly. But let's see. Because there's not a whole lot to trim off, I am running the risk of slipping with the with my rotary blade. So I have to be very careful to make sure that I catch that edge. It looks like it caught most of it, so it's a little better than it was before, and I didn't really get into my seam allowance too, too much, so I'm happy with that. So now I'm gonna burn my edge. I'm just going to go around the entire wallet and do the same thing all the way around. The more prep you do on the front end, the better outcome you're going to have on the back end. I did notice when I was trimming the bottom, I accidentally nicked that little area. So I'm going to try to fix that. See, so now I just created another little bump. So I'm gonna do what I can to try to straighten that bump out. Otherwise it's gonna show up in my edge pane. There we go, that's not too bad. Okay, so now we have all of our edges trimmed and burnt. And the burning, it singes any little piece of fuzz that might be there because if you have a bumpy project, it's all going to show with your edge coating. It's, you cannot, I mean, you can go back and sand it down afterward, but it's better to just focus on that stuff before you get started rather than try to go backward. So I have my base coat dense, I have my roller paint tool, and I have a ready project. So I'm just going to start by rolling on my first coat of base coat. And I'm using a liberal amount here. I'm not shying away, but I'm also trying to make sure that it's a decently even layer. But this first layer is really just to soak into the cork and seal it off. And then the consecutive layers, two, three, and potentially four, those will be for building the edge. If you have some imperfections, you want to be sure that you're rolling at the top and the, or you wanna like kind of roll your tool as well so that you can catch all of those little imperfect areas. And then as you can see, if I get any on the front or the back of the project, I'm just wiping it with my finger quickly. Now I'm getting down to the bottom of this bin so it's getting a little goopy down there. So you might see some chunks come up, but I just try to wipe those off if I notice them. I like to edge coat 
any of my wallets that I'm going to be charging, oops, just got some of my sweater. Any of my wallets that I'm going to be charging a decent amount for, like my talls, my Triskels, these coffins, any wallet that's basically over $60, I will edge coat because I want it to have that nice, clean, professional looking edge. But on my smaller wallets, like anything from the zipper pouches up through the slim bifolds, regular bifolds, I don't edge coat. And the reason I don't edge coat those is because there are so many single pieces on a regular bifold that if I tried to edge coat every single card slot, it would take forever. It also, edge coating doesn't do anything for the structure of the wallet. It's simply for looks and for making a, a nice finished piece. So I would have to really, really raise the prices on those wallets if I were to spend all this extra time edge coating. I like to edge coat in batches. So I'll make a bunch of wallets and edge coat. So this round I had seven wallets. And so I would start on this one and then I'd go to the next one. And by the time I get done, this one would be ready for the second coat. For the purposes of this video, I'm just edge coating this one wallet. So it's, you know, not gonna be, it'll feel like more of a time stretch because I'm only doing one at a time for this batch. But if you make a bunch of wallets and then you start, you dedicate just a couple hours and then you can edge coat all of them and they'll all be done and nice and beautiful. This one, I have done three coats of base coat and you can see it creates like an opaque edge and that is what we're looking for. Edge coat is a polymer based uh, paint. So it feels almost a little rubbery on the, on the edges, which is what we want because it allows the paint to adhere to it properly and it holds it on there like we want it to. But yeah, so this one is three layers. And then these were three to four layers of base coat plus one to two layers of color. So it is a big time, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Investment. It's a time investment, but it really does elevate your wallets and add just that sophistication and just really makes a, a nice, fully complete, really, really pretty wallet. Okay, so we have our first layer on here. What you're going to notice is it's going to start soaking into the cork fibers and it's going to just leave a glossy sheen. But once it's all clear, the first couple layers should be clear. Once it's all clear, we can go back and add a second layer. Another thing about edge coating is you don't wanna rush the process. So I applied that nice first layer and I'm gonna let it sit for at least 10 to 15 minutes before I come back in with the second one. So I'm gonna let this dry up and then I'll be back to show you the second layer. Alrighty, we are ready for our second coat now. So you can kind of see where it's dried and it made that little, it has that, that light sheen to it on the edges. This first pass is always a little rough. Now you can sand this down if you want to, but I find that I don't even need to sand until I'm done with my second layer or even after my third layer, because as soon as we lay the second layer, it's gonna fill in these bumps and cracks even more. So I don't even mess with sandpaper unless I need to. So we're going in for our second coat of base coat. And this is where you're going to start to see the edge being formed. Another note is once you lay the base coat or the edge paint specifically, when you start to lay your color, as soon as you lay it, if you let it set up at all, you don't want to go back in and mess with it. It's not going to work. You're not going to be able to get a nice edge if you try to manipulate it once it's started to set up. Your best bet is to let it dry completely and then come back in with sandpaper and take out whatever imperfection happened. But I do not suggest trying to go back and fix it after you've moved on. And so you can see I'm still doing liberal edges or liberal coats. I'm loading up my edge paint tool. I'm not afraid of adding a decent amount of base coat, but I'm just going to be really aware that it's not pooling or piling up in certain areas. 
So you probably just caught that. I accidentally put a big glob on and it dripped down the side, but you could see I was able to just wipe it right off and then keep it moving. The goal here is to apply even thin coats and then we'll build up from there. So if you need to, you might just have to do a couple extra coats to get a nice edge, but you don't wanna glob it on at this point. You want to just let it build up nice and slow and eventually we'll get the coat or the edge that we're looking for before we apply our paint. So here you go, I have a big blob. I'm just gonna pull that off and retouch that. So there we go, just as quick, we got our second coat on here. I've got all my edges wiped down and it's looking good. So now again, I'm just gonna set it and let it dry. A note about your tool and your paint. You do not want to leave your paint open unless you absolutely have to, but you can pour a little bit of base coat into like a contact lens case or another little container. So that way you're not allowing air to get into your big bottle. That's why mine is globbing up because I'm getting down to the bottom. So I don't have a bunch in there. And so all that time that I leave it open, the air has access to it and it's starting the drying process inside the bottle. So if you have a large bottle, your best bet is to pour it into a smaller container. So then that way you're only allowing air to get into the small amount and not the large amount. You also want to keep your tool clean as much as possible. These little ridges are where the paint sets in. And then when you're applying the paint, it's pulling it. And because those ridges are holding the paint, it's allowed or that's what creates the nice, solid, thin coat. So if you allow the paint to dry in here, it's gonna become smooth and it's not gonna to wanna to roll anymore and you're just not gonna get as nice of an edge. So I always keep some sort of terry towel handy and after every coat, I wipe this off. If you find that it is built up, because I mean, it will build up over time, especially up here around the top edge, then I just take a seam ripper and I dig it into the grooves and pull all that buildup out of there. This is kind of a fun little task to do. It doesn't take long, but it's really satisfying to see all the little buildup come out. When I taught my class at So Bagical on this, I said that it was like watching Dr. Pimple Popper, something along those lines. I'm not huge into that show, but there's something about seeing all the little buildup come out and then you have a nice clean tool. They do sell tool cleaning um, liquids. I'm not sure what it's made of, but you can also use acetone or like nail polish remover to clean this off as well. It is also water soluble, so soap and water will do the trick. But if you want something that's gonna do it very quickly, acetone. All right, we're gonna let this piece dry and we'll be back for the third coat. All right, now that this second coat has sufficiently dried, you can see where it is dried clear. There are some spots that are becoming more opaque and that's because the edge coat is starting to build up in those spots. You can see it all along here. At this point, it's gonna start feeling a little bit rubbery and that is a good sign. And I can now feel in my second coat that I covered up a lot of those imperfections and the little bumpy areas from before. There are still some here and that's okay because this third coat We'll definitely cover that up. So base coat again, and we're just going to apply it same as before, all the way around. Base coat has kind of a self-leveling um, characteristic. So when you put it on, especially if you put on a decent amount, what you're gonna watch it do is it's going to want to settle into the bottom most layer, which is why base coat builds up and creates nice even layers because whenever you put it on, it's going to settle into the, the lowest layer that it can find. So, 
yeah, I mean, that's really it. It's just, it, it's like a self-leveling situation. So you don't need to stress. Like I just caused ridges in my edge coat from my tool. But if you watch it slowly, it'll kind of seep into the areas and create a nice solid edge. Now, if you're specifically trying to build up an area where you might have a pretty decent imperfection or if there's big gaps, then you're just going to kind of pile it on in those areas by tapping a whole bunch into one spot. And then you'll notice that it'll sink down into those lower areas. And then you can just do more layers and it'll build up to be equal with the rest of the wallet. But for all intents and purposes, you would you're better off rolling it instead of tapping it because when you tap it, you can see it creates little tiny tap marks. So rolling it is definitely the way to go because then it creates that self-leveling environment where it will fall into the cracks and crevices. All right, so there is the third coat. You can see it's really white right now. When this dries, this should dry with almost an opaque coloring and then we'll know that we're ready to move on to the color. Or if you want to, if you see areas where it's wavy, it needs to be built up, you can definitely do three, four. You can do as many layers of base coat as you want, but the base coat is where you're getting your edge. You are not going to want to use color to build up your edge because you're just gonna waste the color. You get a lot more base coat, so it's better to use the base coat for what it's intended for. And before you lay color on, See, I just messed with it after it was set up and it made it get a little funky. But yeah, you want to do your edge coat, your, your base coat building with your base coat, not with your color. All right, so I'm gonna let this dry and we'll be back. All right, I wanted to show you what it looked like when it's mid drying, when it's on this third level or third layer of base coat. So you can see where it's starting to dry and it's becoming this white layer. And then you can tell it's still a little wet. You can kind of see unevenness right in through here. But this is going to give you a better idea of what you're looking for. This side is still really wet. I can see that it, like if I were to touch it, I, it would leave a fingerprint in there. So just, that's another thing. Make sure you're not messing with this while it's drying. But see here, this section is dry and it's totally opaque. And this section is still drying. And so what it's doing is it's creating that rounded edge here and it's just starting to turn opaque. So I just wanted to show you what it looks like on the third. Um, once it dries, I will feel all around and decide if I wanna do a fourth layer or not. Because again, this is where we're gonna set ourselves up for success at the end. If we build up a nice edge now, then we won't have to worry about it with our color. Our third layer is now dry. You could see under here, it's still a little wet, but I'm going to move on because if I were to wait to let this dry totally 100% completely, I would be here all night. So when it gets to this stage where it's not tacky and I can rub my fingers on it and it's no problem, it's not messing it up or leaving fingerprints, then I move on to the next layer. And I know that this is going to sit overnight or for several days. So it will cure after I get the color put on. So I'm gonna move on. And so I can see this little edge here. It's not quite what I want it to look like yet. And there's a little nick right here. I can see there's a few bumps pulling through. It's probably air bubbles. This side is nice and it created a nice rounded edge, but because I want to add to this side, I'm gonna do the whole wallet again. I'm not just gonna isolate and do one little area. I like it to be built up all the way around with the same amount of layers, regardless of how the edges look. So if you want to, you can use 220 grit sandpaper, and I'm just gonna lightly scuff my edges here, especially these that are nice and they're built up nicely. But this is where I'm going to come in and fix any imperfections that I may have. So this is where I bumped into it 
while it was still drying. But so I'm not applying a bunch of pressure. I'm just gently sanding it and you'll see it kind of, it just, all the areas that are slightly raised, it knocks down. So I'm just gonna do the same all the way around. And now at this point, if say you had a big bump from um, whenever you were applying it and it dried, you, this is where you would take your sandpaper and you would sand down that one area to make a nice flat edge. Alternatively, you can use a an X-Acto knife. Sometimes if I have one big bump, I'll just come in and just carefully slice it off and then sand it and then move on to another layer. But so this is where you're starting to see your edge really nicely come together. All right, so once all of my edges are nice and smooth, I'm gonna go back and I'm actually going to add a fourth layer of base coat. Now I can, I can go in and add color, I, that wouldn't be a problem, but the color is going to settle and it's going to fall into place. It's not going to build up the edge. So because only one side of this is to my liking, which is it, overall, it's totally fine. But yeah, so I'm just gonna add another layer of base coat because this is where you create that edge. And then I'll go in with color. And so because I know that this will be my last layer of base coat, I'm gonna be extra careful to make sure that I don't get any lumps or bumps or any weird areas. Sometimes I notice that it likes to build up here on the corners, so I always keep a close eye on that. And then we're just gonna do just like before and go all the way around. And now because I'm doing a fourth layer, this edge should now be totally opaque when it dries. I don't want to see any clear spots. Because if I still see clear spots, that's indicative of me missing a spot. And so you should be able to look at it from the side and see that it's nice and even and that there aren't any big bumps or nodules or anything like that. If there are, go back and fix it. Doing edge coat can be really meditative. I find that if I've been sewing a bunch, especially if I'm prepping for a big event and I'm, I've am i been making the same thing over and over, sometimes you don't wanna prep and cut and sew. You wanna just be able to chill and edge coat. And so I will let all my pieces pile up. I'll have 30, 40, 50 pieces that need to be done. And I'll just settle in for the day because I'll know that it's going to take me all day long to edge coat all those pieces. You find a couple good movies, find a good TV series and just chill and edge coat. And you just edge coat in the round. You edge coat one piece, move on to the second. And like I was saying before, by the time you get back to the first piece, it's ready to go. And you just constantly do that all day long. See, so I don't know if you could see it, but whenever I'm rubbing it on, it's creating an indention, but you can see it's slowly filling in the gap. And that's that self-leveling part of it that I was talking about before. All right, layer four, we're gonna let this dry and then we are off to the races after this, whoops, with color. 
Alrighty, Spideys, we are all ready to go. That third layer dried and you can see it's nice and opaque. It, or I guess that was the fourth layer, huh? Fourth layer, it's been several hours. I left for a while. Um, so if I say anything weird, that's why. Also the dogs are chewing on a squeaky toy, I apologize. But, so it's nice and rounded. All of the edges are nice and smooth. You can just feel there's one little bump right there that I can hit with some sandpaper. And so my goal when I'm sanding this little area is I'm just trying to make it to where it's flush and smooth. And when I rub my finger on it, it's not an obvious bump. Okay, there we go. Perfect. It's a little, it's a little wonky right here from where I messed up when I cut the bottom. I'm not going to stress over that. A lot of times when it's drying on these hard corners, it'll get, it'll dry at a point. And so I like to file those down as well. Okay, everything feels great. So we are ready for our color now. And if there were inconsistencies and I felt the need to, I would just add another layer of base coats. I would just continuously build up my base coats until this edge got to be nice and smooth. You don't put on color until you get your edge the way that you want it to be when it's completed. Okay, so I've been thinking about the color that I wanna do. I'm kind of leaning toward doing it like matching the zipper tape color, which is kind of a deep turquoise. I think that that would look nice. And the perk of doing a color that's not, when you're not trying to match it, is then if it doesn't match perfectly, it's okay because it's intentionally off color. But even, so like this is a really dark, deep green, and this is an olive green edge coat, and it still really looks good, and it almost looks like it's the same, but it's two very different colors. But yes, yeah, so subtle variations in color can be really fun. Now I have this turquoise color left over from where I did this one here. So I think that I can, I'm comparing it to the zipper tape here. I think if I skew it a little bit more blue and make it a little darker, I think that it'll work really well. It'll be a nice mix. And there's just a little bit left over in here, which is great because I can stretch it back out by mixing other colors into it. Now I have had a lot of success in mixing all the different companies paint together. And I meant to say this earlier and I forgot to mention it, but Mojo Sews, Michelle's paints are really, really nice as well. And I love mixing her paints to get the colors that I want. Like I used her beige paint with some pink to get this mauve color here. But so yeah, Michelle's paint, Angelus, Giardini, I, I mix all of them together and they all go together really, really nicely. But so to change this color to this color here, I need to add some blue, which I pulled out, and then some gray. Maybe not gray. We'll see what happens with just the blue. I need to make it darker, but this cobalt blue might do the trick. But this is the fun part of edge paint is when you get to play chemistry and mix your colors. Always when you're trying to go to a darker color, start light. Because you can't, or it's a lot harder to bring it back up to a lighter color than it is to bring it darker. You'll see it's already getting close. Do a little bit more blue and I do think it needs a touch of a darker color so like a gray or maybe even a black you have to be really careful with the black it's pretty darn close but it just doesn't have that richness yet so I want to play with that I'm gonna go not that color the dark brown is so dark, it's hard to tell the difference. But I'm gonna do one drop of black and hope that it works. 
And also you may notice I'm using a contact lens case. I picked this up from somebody in one of the groups and it's such a perfect idea. I've tried lots of different little containers, but the contact lens containers, they're airtight. So it's really, really great. And as somebody who used to wear contacts, I have a bunch of these just lying around. I think that did it right there. That one drop of black with the blue. And now it's almost a perfect match. Now, something else to consider when you're mixing colors is that when they dry, they always dry a touch darker. So I think that'll be perfect for this one. All right, so after I mix, I do like to clean off my applicator. I'm not really sure why. I think a lot of times, especially when you're mixing up and adding to older paints, it'll pick up some chunks down on the bottom. And I just like to have control over how much is going on my applicator tool. Clean up this mess real quick. All right, let's get into it. So now I'm just, I'm not overloading my brush with this. Whereas when I was doing the base coat, I was being extremely liberal with it. And I'm not, not being liberal, but I don't want to flood the piece. I think that's a pretty good match right there. Now the goal is to only have to do one coat of color, but a lot of times what happens with the color is when it dries, I notice that as it dries, it pulls toward the center and sometimes each long edge on the, the sides will be less pigmented than down the center. So a lot of times you do have to do a second coat of color. I think that that might have something to do with the water in the paint being absorbed, or not being absorbed, but, um evaporating as it dries, but that is just a total guess on my part. And so when you're applying the color, obviously you want this to be as pristine as possible. You want to make sure that you're getting it all down the sides, not leaving any gaps. And I always try to wipe the color off if I get it on the front or the back. However, sometimes you do have just a, a touch of it and I just go back after it dries and I clean it off with acetone. And now if you're using this on vinyl, you're gonna have to use your own discretion. I don't work with vinyl, so I don't know what acetone will do to it. I do know that on certain colors of cork, the acetone, I use a Q-tip to, to apply the acetone to actually remove the, the paint from the cork and sometimes with enough scrubbing it'll lift some of the color off the cork but it hasn't done enough it hasn't like taken the color off totally but I noticed that the q-tip will have some of the cork coloring I mostly notice that with eggplant so there's lots of little chunks in here because that the original color that we mixed from was kind of old that's the other thing. So when edge coat is drying out, it gets thick. And if you want to use the same exact color, but you don't want to like remix it, you can add a couple drops of water and stretch it back out. But I have learned that when I do that, a lot of times that's when I have to do at least two to three coats of color. But when it's fresh out of the bottle and freshly mixed up, it's fine. But if you have to stretch it with water, you Generally speaking, you'll always need to do at least two coats. All right, so I'm just going around. I'm making sure that I'm getting all my edges. Sometimes it can be a little sneaky. All right, already almost done here. All right, so we have our first coat of color. I'm gonna let this dry and then I will come back once it's dry and let you know, we'll check it out and we'll see if we wanna do a second coat. So it would have been perfectly fine with one coat of color, but I accidentally knocked into it somehow and I kind of messed up the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. 
Um, so I'm going to try to just do this whole straight shot here and hopefully it will blend in and I won't have to go all the way around the entire piece. I generally like to go around the entire piece so then it's two coats all the way around, but we're going to see since this is all one straight area. So I don't know if you can tell, but sanding the color, it kind of tears it away in chunks which is not beautiful, but it is what it is. Um, traditionally, you can get a little mini iron and you can heat up the edge coat to pop bubbles and to smooth it out. I have never tried the little iron and obviously I don't want to use my big iron for it, but sometimes if I want to, or if I need to, I can, you can like heat it up and then kind of put pressure on it and it'll make it flat into one layer again, instead of being all chopped up from the sandpaper. So I'm just gonna come back in on this side here. See, so if I were to stop it right there, there would be a very visible line where the second layer starts. But I think here on the corners, it's not gonna be as obvious. So I'm fairly confident I can get away with just doing the sides like this, or the bottom edge rather. So there we go. All right, I'm gonna put this in an even safer spot so that this can set up and dry. But here you can see all the other edges look really nice with just the one coat. So as soon as this dries, we will be in the clear. I really hope that you guys found this video helpful. As you can see, Edge Coat is just the cherry on top of a really nice project and got some tips or tricks or what have you from it. If you have any specific questions, let me know. I am by no means a pro. Um, I just do it a lot, so I have a lot of experience. But if I don't know the answer to your question, I can certainly try to help find it. And yeah, be sure to practice your edge coating, post some videos in my Facebook group. You can find the link below to join there and I will catch y'all on the flip side.